welcome to the deep dive. Okay, so you've sent us sources covering something. Well, pretty extraordinary this time. We're talking claims, alleged reports really, coming out of Panama about um, an extraterrestrial organism found inside a meteorite, potentially. It sounds like science fiction, doesn't it? But if there's even a shred of truth here. Exactly. It's the kind of thing that would just completely change everything we think we know. A massive scientific discovery, a total paradigm shift for, well, for understanding life beyond Earth. Mm -hmm. So our mission today for you listening is to cut through the noise a bit. We need to really look at the source material, uh, analyze what's being described. The creature itself. Yeah. Right. And then explore the huge implications scientifically, ecologically, and also the challenges, the risks. Because let's be honest, a claim like this comes with a lot of baggage. And it's worth setting the scene properly. Yeah. The meteorite idea, it's not totally out of left field. We've known for a while that meteorites can carry organic molecules, the uh, building blocks of life maybe. Yeah. But an actual organism, if that's true, we're talking about an extremophile beyond anything we know, something that survived space. The vacuum, the radiation. All of it. And the impact surviving that fiery entry and hitting the ground. I mean, the level of resilience, it forces us to rethink what life can actually endure. Okay, let's unpack this. Let's start with the visuals because that's what went viral, right? What are the sources actually saying it looks like? Well, the descriptions from the videos people saw, they mentioned something like uh, tentacles or long arms maybe yeah. moving around in water. And then there's that comparison that grabbed everyone. The sources kept saying it's similar to a symbiote like Venom from Marvel, which is quite a picture. It definitely gets attention, <laughs> but we need to be careful there. Is that comparison about how it moves that fluid sort of shape-shifting look? Or is it just, you know, hype for the cameras? What the description does suggest, though, is adaptation. That tentacled form moving in water. It points to something built for navigating a liquid environment. A really unique biological design, maybe evolved for wet conditions wherever it came from. Or maybe adapting after landing here. Possibly. No. Or maybe a structure like a hydrostatic skeleton, something suited for pressure or fluid. It's fascinating biologically. And it's not just moving passively, right? The source has hinted at something more advanced, reactions to light or maybe temperature. Yeah, that's a key detail. If it's actively responding to stimuli like that, well, that implies a pretty sophisticated sensory system. More than just basic chemistry. Exactly. Right. We're talking maybe some kind of neurological network or at least complex chemical signals. Terrestrial life uses photoreceptors, thermoreceptors. This thing might have something similar, but maybe operating on totally different principles. An extraterrestrial twist, like the sources said, developed under completely alien pressures. Okay, here's where it gets really interesting. Moving past just what it looks like. What does this mean if it's real? For science, globally. Well, the first, most obvious hit is astrobiology. Boom. Direct proof of life beyond Earth. The question is answered. Right. The debate shifts instantly. It's no longer if life exists elsewhere, but how common is it? What forms does it take? Not just on planets, but maybe drifting in space, inside rocks. And that ripples right back to Earth, doesn't it? To basic biology. Imagine studying its genetics, its metabolism how it reproduces. If it's radically different. I mean, think about it. Yeah. We could discover fundamentally new ways life can operate. Like, is it even carbon-based? Does it use DNA, RNA, or something else entirely? Precisely. Maybe it uses different amino acids, different sugars. The opposite handedness or chirality yeah. to life on Earth, that would blow our understanding of biochemistry wide open. It could unlock processes we don't even have models for. Wow. But, and this is a huge but, all that potential comes with immediate risk. The ecological question. Ah, uh, right, releasing this thing. Yeah, accidentally or, well, even on purpose someday maybe. Yeah. What happens if this completely novel biology gets out into our environment? The consequences could be catastrophic. We hear invasive species, but this feels like orders of magnitude worse. Why the immediate red flag? Because our ecosystem has zero defenses against it. Think about rabbits in Australia, Dutch elm disease, Things that wrecked ecosystems because native life couldn't cope. Mm -hmm. Now imagine something truly alien. It might outcompete everything. If its metabolism is super efficient, it could just starve out local microbes, collapsing the food chain from the bottom up. That is, yeah, that's terrifying. It's like a sci-fi nightmare scenario we suddenly have to treat as plausible. Exactly. Which brings us to verification. Your sources rightly emphasize, look, this is all speculative until proven. Rigorously. 
independently. So what does that actually involve? What do scientists need before they can say, okay, this is real? It's a multi-layered process. Yeah. You need detailed genetic analysis, assuming it has genes we can sequence. Right. Or whatever its equivalent is. Microscopic studies to see its structure, its cells, if any. Uh -huh. Controlled experiments, how does it react to different conditions here on Earth? Temperature, pressure, different chemicals. The burden of proof is immense. As it should be. Extraordinary claims, you know. And while that's happening, assuming someone has this thing contained, the immediate focus becomes safety, right? Biosafety and ethics. Absolutely. Biosafety isn't just keeping it in a box. It's assessing the risk. Mm. Could it be pathogenic? Could it outcompete native life if it escaped? Pathogenic in a way our immune systems have never even encountered. Precisely. No pre-existing defenses. And competition-wise, imagine an organism just way more efficient at grabbing resources. It could literally reshape ecosystems on a microbial level, which affects everything else. And think about this if it survived space. Mm. Doesn't that imply it might be resistant to our usual ways of containing dangerous stuff? Sterilization methods? That's the terrifying paradox. Yeah. An extremophile might shrug off heat, radiation, chemicals that kill terrestrial microbes. We might need entirely new containment protocols, maybe even new facilities, designed for something non-terrestrial. Which leads straight into the ethics. Mm -hmm. Do we even have the right to mess with this? To study it? Knowing the potential for accidental release or contamination? It's a huge ethical tightrope walk between scientific curiosity and, well, existential caution. Okay, let's say, hypothetically, confirmation happens. Hmm. The sources predict, basically the world mobilizing instantly, NASA, ECOTC, global science bodies, everyone jumps in. Yeah, it becomes priority number one globally. And the sources specifically mention the pressure on Panama. Why is the location so critical? Because they'd be ground zero. The government there would be squeezed between needing to lock down the area for safety and the intense global demand for access, for transparency, for samples. International collaboration would be demanded. Absolutely. Everyone would want in. Data sharing, joint research. It would put enormous strain on Panama to manage a situation with truly planetary implications. And that global effort would immediately zoom in on the origin question, right? Where did this meteorite come from? Exactly. Is it Martian? Is it from somewhere totally unknown deep space? Is it ancient, maybe something that arrived here eons ago and got preserved? Each answer leads down a different path, scientifically and even geopolitically. Okay, moving beyond the labs and governments, let's talk society, <laughs> culture. The sources say this would cause massive shockwaves. Well, undoubtedly. On one hand, you can see it inspiring people like crazy. A whole new generation of scientists, artists, thinkers, just fueled by this incredible discovery. It answers that huge ancient question, are we alone? Yeah, the ultimate question. But there's a flip side, fear. The sources mention that public fascination could easily curdle into uh, fear or speculation about an alien invasion. Especially given the initial descriptions, right? The venom thing, it sounds predatory, unknown. Fear is a natural reaction to something so profoundly alien. And the media environment doesn't help. Not at all. Social media especially. Look how quickly the video spread, the speculation. That runs way faster than careful peer-reviewed science. You get this huge gap between viral narratives and actual verified facts. That's dangerous territory, ripe for misinformation, panic. So wrapping this up, really? what does it all mean? Where do we stand? Well, look, if this is confirmed. Big if. Huge if. But if it is, it's history. Capital H, it changes humanity's place in the cosmos, period. But, and this is the constant refrain from the sources, and what we have to stress to you, skepticism and caution are paramount. The level of proof needed is astronomical, just like the claim itself. It's that duality again. On one side, you have this incredible potential revolutionizing biology, astrobiology, maybe even physics and chemistry. Unlocking secrets of the universe. Right. But balanced right against that is the absolute immediate need for rigorous science, extreme caution, watertight biosafety, and some really deep thinking about the ethics of handling something. Mm. Well, not from around here. Which leaves us, and you, with one final thought to chew on. Something sparked by the tension in the sources. If this creature is confirmed, how long until the global pressure for transparency for everyone to know everything now overwhelms the caution needed for safe biological isolation and responsible ethical decisions. That's the tightrope, isn't it? The global hunger to know versus the critical need to be careful. That's the real challenge this kind of discovery would force upon the world.